games, brains and a head banging life. A happy new year. It is the first nasties of 2021. And we're kicking off this year with a happy one. Mm. No, not in the <laughs> no. slightest. It is, of course, you've seen the title, I Spit on Your Grave. One of the most famous of the nasties. Mm. Not that it's not famous because it's known as a video nasty. Mm. Just one of the more famous films that ended up on that list. Mm. Uh, also known as Day of the Woman and a lot of uh, mm. other terror toys, which is a terrible name. Yeah, you know, just Day of the Woman. It makes sense, but it it hides. I feel like that title hides mm. a lot of the sort of revenge, nastiness, grime yeah, of it all. You know, it, yeah. but also like the I, the title I spit in your grave. I was never a fan of that either mm. because it sounds doubt cheesy, less. Less severe. This is a very severe movie. Yeah, this isn't something where, yeah, at any point you feel good. Even the events that occur and the revenge aspect of it, Nothing other than nice. being pro her mm. and the end of these particular men, it doesn't make you. You don't come away feeling any better mm. from it. You just you constantly feel a bit grimy, dirty, yeah. uncomfortable, unhappy with the whole film. Yeah. But that doesn't take away from the fact. That it is a good movie. Yeah. It's a well-made movie, a well-told story, mm. a good, well-acted. I think it really was. Yeah, I think there are certain characters that didn't take too far. Yeah. Um, I found it very believable, and you are kind of uh, chewing her on. It's weird, obviously, that it's part of a film that's made for entertainment. Yeah. I do find that a bit odd, though, overall, but I did enjoy it. Well, we'll get into yeah. those details in yeah. a bit. But first, of course, we have this particular Blu-ray is a two-disc special edition. What's special about this one is it comes with exclusive new content, or at least was considered new at the time of this release. And it, it includes the second disc, which is Growing Up With I Spit In Your Grave, which explores the myths behind the 1978 cult classic with the film's first ever feature-length documentary, helmed by Terry Zachary, the son of the franchise creator and director Mia Zachary. Five years in the making, Zachary's exhaustive analysis of the history of the film, which is packed with never-seen-before footage and exclusive interviews, including the lead actress Camille Keaton. So it's basically what every Spit in Your Grave fan has been waiting for. It includes extra footage, Why Zachary Made, I Spit in Your Grave 1978, uh, Terry Zachary, 8mm film with Camille uh, Keaton, as well as commentaries by writer and director Mia Zachary and cult film critic Joel Bob Briggs. So that's what that one is, two-disc version. Released in 1978, and of course, when you mentioned, written, directed, and edited by Mia Zachary. It stars Camille Keaton, Aaron Tabor, Richard Pace, Anthony Nichols, and Gunther Kleeman. That is actually mm. the, the cast. Small. There are a couple of small roles yeah. here and there, but the predominant feature is Camille Keaton mm. and four men, mm. uh, which are the ones we've just mentioned. Camille stars as Jennifer Hills, mm -hmm. Uh, she basically, she's a writer who lives in New York City, goes to stay at a small chalet summer house, house yeah. summer house to write her book and uh, basically suffers at the hands of four men, local men. Mm. We'll get into the suffering in a bit. Of course, this is obviously famous f uh, for its depiction of graphic sexual violence. Mm. That is its major bugbear. It's one where watching it... Uh, it's clear. Yeah, there's, there's no, no there's no question marks of like we often have. Why is this a nasty? Yeah, that's yeah. that's the thing. Sometimes you go, oh, I wonder why. And other times you're like, well, hundred percent. Like even now, it's shocking to watch in like 2020. Mm -hmm. So when we watched it, 2020, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course, we watched it at the end of last year before mm -hmm. sitting down to talk about this as well. So severe. I mean, they have a timer. There's an amount, and the depictions of what is well, what is gang rape, rape. Mm -hmm. It uh, takes up 30 minutes of the film's 102 mm. minute runtime. Mm. That is a lot of, oh, and we haven't seen it. We can attest to that. Mm. You know, the whole sequence is so severe. And then you think it's over and then it carries on. And then we go to another part mm. and it's carrying on and so on and so forth. Of course, it was branded as being nasty in the UK and a tug of censorship mm. still to this day. Um, many, many critics, people like that, hated it, obviously hated it at the mm. time. Not You've already said the fact that you've kind of hinted, I guess, at a wider problem with it mm. is how is this a form of entertainment, mm. you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, just the kind of that, 
that that major issue that leads to the revenge it could be something else that happens to at least revenge why did the rape get put in there is it just kind of make it more sensational and get more attract more attention i mean sensational of course mm. absolutely but that is a that is a that is a a calling card mm. of the a lot of movies in the 70s and 80s you were trying to stand out you wanted people for whatever reason to pick up your vhs copy in that video store. Mm. It can be from the cover, which of course was that was its original cover, which mm -hmm. is of course the back of the woman with her torn outfit, her butt, and mm -hmm. stuff like holding a knife. Apparently, I can't confirm this, but apparently Demi Moore, the famous actor mm. Demi Moore, says that that scantily clad woman in the front cover is her. Oh. That's according to her memoir, yeah, Inside well, Out. I don't know how picked the actual lady that was in the film naked for quite uh, a bit. Well, uh, I... Yeah, Right, let's. I'm going to flash up the cover of the original I Spit in Your Grave here now. Now, Camille Keaton is a very thin, skinny woman. If you look at that cover, mm. that is a much more fuller figure. Do you see the difference? I think, and don't, this is just a I think, right? I think they were like, they wanted to sexualize the cover. Yeah. And they wanted it to be a fuller, fuller figure, sexier figure. Because yeah. Camille Keaton is very, I'm, well, I'm, she's very thin. Mm. She's very thin. And so on. If you look at that kind of details, look at that figure. It's mm. different to, to her figure. Yeah. And that's what they wanted. Uh, Demi Moore, obviously, in a certain period of time, was doing a lot of glamour shots as well and mm. things like that. I don't know if that's true. Demi Moore says it is. Yeah. Who's to yeah, argue with the lie, person that really? says it? It's a weird lie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. There's no good reason for the lie. Mm. But times have changed. So much so that this film has spawned a remake in mm. 2010. And that remake has had its own sequels. Uh, I Spit in Your Grave 2 in 2013 and I Spit in Your Grave 3, Vengeance is Mine in 2015. There's also been a direct sequel mm. to this film mm. in 2019. I did not know this before Ooh. I started recording called I Spit in Your Grave Deja Vu, which has both the director and Camille Keaton returning. Now, I'm oh. very interested to see that yeah. movie. Yeah, try and check that one, Dad. I have, of course, seen and reviewed the remakes. They're all on the website. Go check that out. I was a very hefty critic of the original remake, mm. I Spit in Your Grave. I said they did something incredibly wrong, which is they turned the character of Jennifer Hills mm. into someone I actually didn't feel I could root for anymore because I felt her vengeance went too far. Yep. And that levels in that movie entered torture, mm. a saw S torturous. Yep. And it's like, oh, okay, this isn't just like, I'm going to get kill you like she does in the original. Mm. This is... Okay, you're now devising traps. It, it's a weird thing to explain. I realise that like, people are like, well, what's wrong with that? She got raped and abused and all that. And it's like, yeah, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you watch the remake, you'll be a bit like, two wrongs don't make a right, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You say, yeah. well, what Jennifer Hills kills them all in the original. Isn't that a wrong as well? Of course it is. But that's you know what mean? incomplete as a thing, as a moment where you feel like she would left that, try to lift that behind and carry on with her life. Yes. This kind of extra... Like you said, Sawresque. Sawresque, yeah. 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 And I, I generally feel as well that Jennifer Hills uh, in this in this 1978 version, she wasn't enjoying what she was doing. Mm. This wasn't any reason but ven revenge. Mm. That's like, had, had consumed her and, you know, and stuff like that. I didn't believe, like, you know, I don't, I never got the impression when we finished mm. at the end of the 1978 film, she was going to just go back home and be happy and that was it. Yeah. You know, there's no question. This is scarred for life. Yeah. Yeah, you know? definitely. But we'll get a little bit more into the plot now. We've kind of touched upon a lot of it already with the mm -hmm. fact that Jennifer Hill, she lives in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. She rents an isolated cottage and goes to stay there for the summer. On her way in, we actually meet the first of the male characters. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny Stillman is particular. He's the real standout mm -hmm. villain, but also the best actor amongst the group of men. Definitely. Uh, he And it's so strange because she does nothing wrong. But the film instills that horrible thought press into you where she like gets out, she's in a summer dress and, you mm. know, she's flashing a bit of leg and all yeah. that. And it's like, oh, she shouldn't be doing that. And it's like, no, fuck off. Yeah. No, fuck right off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, have some self-control yeah. there, fellas. Do you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So you get, I do set up quite nicely how like, the boredom of a small town, mm -hmm. how small town is as well. Like, oh, it does just, it really well, doesn't it? Just, like, the two, the other, there's like two other guys that just kind of like kicking uh, around Andy behind Andy and Stanley. Them. Yep, just kicking around behind. And you kind of get the idea that like, it's not some sort of busy service. It's literally like a one pump station. Mm -hmm. People just drift through. 
Yeah, time wasters. Absolutely. Yeah, you see it, they're bored, they got fuck all else to do. Yeah. And to be fair, though, they don't give Jennifer much hassle. No. He tries to flirt with her, but he's shit at it. Mm. Uh, she kind of, she doesn't really flirt back. She's just friendly. Yeah. She's just friendly. Yeah. Which, like I said, again, guys, come on, man. A woman being friendly with me does not mean she want to fucking sleep with you. Yeah, because at my point, I, I questioned why she was saying where she was going. Mm. And I was like, what, 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 like, what? There shouldn't be an issue. Mm. It's this horrible, obviously, that, that kind of thought process. Of, but it's a, it's a modern day thought process to it. It yeah. is. Where the world is a little bit more dangerous. Yeah, you don't just say where you're going. Like, it's like when people say on social media, you don't say where you're going or where you're yeah, of course. staying and things like that. Yeah. It's silly stuff, but ultimately it is the reality. And mm. we then got, obviously, this movie being dated, things were, I don't know, safer, if that's the right word you want to mm. use, whether it was actually safer or not, or people believed it was safer. And she thought that, that's why she went out there on her own. She thought that. She comes from a big city. Uh, there's a, you know, you could uh, you could say, well, potentially people are a lot friendlier in the city and stuff like that. But then you could also argue, well, she should have been a bit more wary, actually, yeah. because city life is quite more dangerous yeah. than perhaps countryside. But yeah, you know, she stays there. She also meets Matthew, mm -hmm. who is basically a local worker. He works for the grocery store. Matthew is, what's, the, how would you, Matthew has... I think he's got learning difficulties. Learning difficulties, yes, exactly right. He's, yeah, he's got quite severe... So, not severe enough that he can't have a job and mm. interact with people. So, yeah, it's kind of that thing. But they set that up quite well as well, the fact that he's got a job. So, it's like, he, he can... He can be independent. Yep. He just obviously needs a bit more support. That's what it basically mm. is. And uh, he really, he wants to be cool. That's kind of his thing. Mm, and fit. because of the, yeah. And he's trying to constantly make friends with the other three men who, who, who don't treat him terribly. Even no. though they never treat him badly, but I guess they're kind of just used to pushing him away yeah. and stuff like that. And to kind of get in with them, mm. he implies to them that he, when he dropped off the groceries to Jennifer, he saw her breasts. Mm. Like, that's his kind of thing. Um, which, basically, I guess, gives the other three impression that she's easy or she's yeah. up for it and stuff like that. Um, you know, that's where that yeah. kind of comes about. And you kind of, Stanley and Andy are the first sort of two that start to give her some shit. As they, she, she's, her lake house, her summer home, summer, the place she's staying, is on a river. Yeah. They drive up and down in a boat, mm. constantly watching her and stuff like that. They make her uncomfortable. She'll often be in a hammock and a bikini and stuff yeah. like that, and her shirtless and, and things like that. And obviously it leads to what we all know it leads to, which is her eventually being attacked by the men. Mm. Uh, the men kind of imply they're doing it for Matthew. Yeah, to get him to get him having his first sexual experience. Yeah, so lose his of, virginity. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's their justification in the heads of like, probably part of it of like, oh, we're just trying to like, you know, Help him out yep. and things like that, and it's not. It's 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 a kind of like little point to kind of give a bit more backstory. Like obviously they're trying to help out their friend, um, but obviously it doesn't justify anything. No, of course, absolutely yeah. not. And it means means the odds as well was because um, what's call it Matthew can't perform basically. Yeah, yeah. So the other three men take turns and raping her across different sections. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think first it's Johnny and then they let her get away. Mm. She crawls and runs through the woods. She then gets got by the other guys. Mm. They rape. It's very protracted. It is as long mm. as you think. And, you know, um, for me, I'm not a fan of this kind of no. film, this kind of stuff. But, you know, for what it's done and how it's done and, um, to, uh, dare I say, to, to the level of tastefulness that they managed to yeah. keep it, it's not... It's graphic. Of course it's graphic. But it's not like... Uh, ugly graphic. Does that make sense? I get what you mean because other times where like they, they've kind of cameras are a lot close, like a lot closer. Yeah. Have like sort of fast angles to make it a bit more. I don't know, juice it up a little bit. Mm. But yeah, it was just how it happened. The yeah, soundtrack of course. didn't kind of go nuts either. I wasn't like it was over the top. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know if they would have got less hassle if they kind of said this was like a. They based the story on like a real event. I know obviously women get raped and obviously this does happen, but I don't know if they would have No, because I think that would have been worse mm. because then what you're showing... Is someone's what actually happened to someone. Yeah, that's, that's a little... That's actually worse, potentially. Yeah, yeah. But she, she eventually gets back back to her house and they attack her again there. Yeah. This is where Matthew becomes part of the gang and he mm. also rapes her here. Um, she's pretty much left for dead. Mm. But Johnny outside wants... Isn't like... He wants to make sure. Yeah. So he actually sends Matthew to go back and kill her. Yeah. You know, taking advantage of Matthew again. Matthew can't bring himself to do it. So he dips the knife in her blood that's mm. on her face and then claims he killed her. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that. Effectively, that's like 
Act one, mm. done. Because yeah. act two is the following days and we kind of see Jennifer traumatised, effectively trying to get herself back together. We see yeah. her bathing, we see her sitting there and uh, time is done well by her injuries. Yeah, the bruising, how it fades and stuff. Yeah, how it fades and that gives us an impression. But also, credit to Camille Keaton. Mm. Her demeanour hardens. Mm. Now, I, I I do wonder if she also lost some weight during that period. It wasn't something I paid much attention because she's quite a thin woman as well. But that would be a good angle if they did that as well. Like yeah. she lost a couple of uh, yeah. a stone here and there because she definitely hardens. The lighting changes as well. Mm. What was a very summery looking film? She's often in shadows and darkness and stuff mm. like that here. Um, but she definitely, you get the impression she's hardened mm. by the experience. As of course she would be. Yeah. Uh, and we, we we build to her going to a church, basically. Mm. And it's in the church she asks for forgiveness. And you're like, boom, here we go. This is what's going to happen, yeah. Yeah, and then we sort of stem, we start to see her following and paying attention and watching uh, Johnny from particular. She watches Johnny mm. from a distance and sees he has a wife and kids, yeah. which was a bit of a shock in the movie. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, you know. And it's like, does that complicate things for Jennifer? It kind of does to mm. a degree. But of course, it's all about getting her revenge. Mm. And there is some great stuff here. There's a great sequence in the... Um, when they realise she's still alive. Yeah. And there's a great sequence inside a, a cafe. Yeah. Really and Matthew's job. really freaking out about it and stuff like that. And Johnny's trying to take control and mm. things like that. Or when she goes and makes the call for Matthew to come and deliver groceries. Yeah. And how Matthew acts about that. He's mm. so fucking scared. But he, like, he, he, he has to go do it. He has yeah, to. It's his job. Yeah. But his plan is actually, he ends up stealing like a hatchet or a knife from the butcher. And his plan is there is to like, he's going to, he's going to kill her yeah. kind of thing. But she's well, she's well, um, well ready for well that. that. Yeah. Uh, she obviously, what she does is she basically uses what got the whole situation started, um, her, her sexuality yeah. to lead these men into the problems basically yeah, yeah and matthew she leads she leaves matthew outside she's wearing a white gown she strips off and has matthew sleep with her mm. and while he's uh having sex with her she puts a noose around his neck and then strangles mm. him to death and that is matthew out of the game mm. i'm gonna touch upon something i didn't like here okay so she sleeps with matthew to set him up for the noose yeah. right fair enough that's fine that's how they want to do that part they they later, and Matthew, I mean, I'm going to get graphic here, but Matthew finishes. Yeah. That's made clear. But also it's made clear as later on, Camille Keaton, Jennifer, yeah. says to Johnny that, and laughs and jokes about how Matthew finally came. Yeah. That was the thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That seems unnecessary, right? Do you think they needed that part? I don't yeah. think they needed that part. Yeah, I don't think they needed no. Yeah, I don't think they needed that no. part. It adds a little bit of grottiness to it. It's like, like, you know... He could, he could have done that without all of that. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah, it's just a bit odd. Yeah. Uh, but of course, the main focus, the one we all want out of the game is mm. Johnny. Yeah. And he does get it. He does get it in a way that's Ooh. probably what the, horrific. Yeah, very... Horrific. And she eventually, she goes sees him at the, 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 the gas station. Mm. And uh, he does, he does the, ball, the thing, you know, that makes him the ultimate scumbag. Wow, you were kind of asking for it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And stuff like that. Ugh. But she plays along with it and gets them back to hers. And he is very well acted. He has some serious reservations mm. about it. Yeah. But she puts him at ease and stuff like that. And eventually end up in the bath together. Yeah. And, you know, they're talking, he's massaging. And he ends up talking to her. And it's actually a really civil conversation yeah. about his family and stuff like that. Mm. But he's a, he's, he's a misogynist. Mm. And even when he talks about his wife and her and stuff like that, you, you know, that's what he is. Yeah. It's the man he is. And the, the build is horrific. You know, it's bubbly. He's got his eyes closed. She's massaging his chest and mm. she reaches down and mm. pulls a knife out from underneath a blanket. She puts it in the water. We all know what's coming. Well, no, she's not just massaging his chest. She's a... Uh, oh, you're having, absolutely right. Having a fun time with the bath toy. You are right. <laughs> she uh, she has her hand under the water massaging his groin. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, he's out, his eyes closed. He's enjoying it. Mm. And uh, she ends up cutting his penis off. Mm -hmm. And he has that initial, oh, and it's like, obviously that initial shock, shock where he's just like, oh, don't, you know. Mm. Then he realises and the blood starts pumping. Mm. He's panicking like crazy. She yeah. gets out of the bathroom, locks him in, and he bleeds to death. And mm. we do see that aftermath. That bathroom is... Covered. Fucking yeah. covered. Which then, of course, leads us to the last two, Stanley and Andy, who uh, realise... That it's Jennifer. Mm. Like, they're, they're basically, Johnny just doesn't show yeah. up for work. He doesn't show to meet his wife. 
and pick up the kids. Yeah. And they realise Jennifer is involved. So they go for her. Their plan is to go for her. But she's prepared. Yeah. To, 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 she's prepared. And uh, basically turns the tables in, in a boat sequence mm. on the river where she manages to knock them out of the boat mm. and then teases them spinning around and spinning yeah. around. She kills one with an oar, uh, hitting them in the fucking head, basically. Yeah. And then the other is swimming in desperately. And he ends up grabbing onto the propeller part. Oh, yeah, and then getting... And then that's how she kills him as well. And the final shot of the movie is her speeding off in the boat mm. and uh, with her face as the credits come up. Mm. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, that's... It's 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 a great second act. Mm. It is because you you are behind Jennifer Hills. You are behind her character. I don't think there's any question about it. Not just because you have to be because of what she suffered. Because like I said, I think this the remake got that wrong. Yeah. Because ultimately, let's never forget this is just a movie. Mm. Camille Keaton wasn't raped and abused by these yeah. men. She's an actor. Yeah. A very good one as well. Yeah. It's the story being told so you can detach yourself from the whole you've got to do it, feel this way because mm. of guilt yeah. and stuff like that. It is when it comes down to a film. Yeah. She's a character and this was the story that they were telling. But to act, actively get you behind her <clears throat> was is, it's not easy. No. And that worked. But it worked also because of the capabilities of the men. They could have been taken the other way mm. too villainous. Yeah. Like one of the things I hated in the remake was how the sheriff would end up being shown and proven. Like he would, uh, she would end up calling the sheriff because of modern mm. day technology. And the sheriff would, was the father of the men that raped her or one of the men. Yeah. So he got involved and then shot her and stuff like that. Oh, and it was like, yeah. oh, come on, man. Not everyone in the world is a villain. Yeah. And the, you fact, know? And the fact that they kept it quite insular as well. It was just her against them. And she did quite swiftly as well. Like Once she kind of got her plan together, she did quite swiftly. Oh, I'd say it took went. over the pace, uh, place over a day or two at most. Yeah. 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 So it wasn't like, oh, oh, why didn't the police get involved, things like that. And yeah, it's just like, it seems quite convoluted on the, in the sequels. Just keep it how it was. Mm. And like I said, you don't want to make these villains pantomime. Like they're, they're scummy enough. Um, and the fact you set them up in like a small town, it doesn't defend anything, but sometimes you would understand a small town I get you know, the boredom aspect. Yeah. Coming from a country, when I was a child, coming from a country that had a very small town aspect, mm. I get the boredom yeah. aspect. Yeah. You know, I really do. But boredom, you know what I mean? Oh, As yeah. we say, boredom yeah. shouldn't lead to this yeah. level of... But it is isn't a movie in that sense. Now, here's the problem with I spit in your grave. I've now seen this movie. I'm like, that's, that's at least my third or fourth mm. time. I have seen it a few times over the years. Mm. Do I actually like it? There's the problem. Mm, I, I think it's a well-made yeah. film. Mm. I think it's enjoyable on aspects of characters, building, mm. storytelling, and acting. But is it a good film? There's the question. Mm. Does that protracted element of the sexual abuse make it just not a good film? I wouldn't put it... I wouldn't go, oh, I want what, what film to watch tonight, and then just grab... I spit mm. in your grave and put it on, or five people over. I wouldn't... Choose it as a film to watch. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, it's, it's not, not a, let's get the family round, yeah. you and, know? And for a hot, there's quite a lot of horror films that you would do that with. But this, or other nasties, this one I wouldn't. Mm. But I'm glad I've seen it. Um, yeah, but I, I wouldn't just put it on on and on over and over again. Yeah. So that's that's kind of, it's a... That's the ultimate thing. One-off film for me. But as a nasty, and as a video nasty, and as a film in general, mm. it's so well made, it's so well told, it's so, although 102 minutes might sound like a long time, I don't it's think not. it reflects that. No. I think I think you feel that at all. No. I think all of that makes this one of the best of the mm. nasties. Yeah. Just through the pure class mm. of the filmmaking abilities, and like I said, the acting and the willingness. And it's one of those where you generally hope that, and maybe that's what the documentary is for, where when they did, they finished a particularly harrowing rape scene. That the cast broke out the characters while hugging and just like laughing and joking and having a good time. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's what you want, you hope. Yeah. I presume it would have been because these men are actors and this woman is an actor. They must have felt incredibly uncomfortable, you know, to, 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 to be involved in this sort of yeah. thing. But like, yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to be cool afterwards and mm. stuff like that, you know? Yeah. And I imagine that was very much the case. I like to, th I like to think that. You like to think that. I, 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 it always comes back to the length of rape, the length of the rape mm. scenes and being used as entertainment and things like that. It doesn't sit great with me. So I feel like you could have had a bit where it was implied what was going to happen to her with like, you know, like quick cuts of what was happening without showing it for 30 minutes in total. So before we wrap up uh, this part, mm -hmm. before we wrap up this nasty, 
I'm just going to go through some of the banning issues, particularly yeah. around the world as well as the yeah. UK. As the UK, you know, it's a video nasty, mm. and it was, you know, part of that. But other countries mm. had big issues with this as well, mm -hmm. including Ireland, Norway, Iceland, and West Germany banned a film outright, claiming, of course, it glorified violence against women. I think they've got that wrong. That's where the, these mm. these censors get this wrong. Mm. This is not glorifying violence against women. Glorifying. Mm. At what point does this make this look attractive yeah. and pretty and yeah. go, yeah, this might incite a person to go out and do this? Kind of like from Watch Up Day, like with train spotting. People, mm. people like wrong, looking at it as glorifying drug use. And it's like, well, no. You didn't watch it. Then you see, you see, you might see the odd shot of them at club, they play like a sort of like a 90s soundtrack over it, but you see the after effect of their drug taking. Nothing about that is glamorising it, which I don't. I feel that's a little bit harsh on that point. I do, and I disagree massively disagree with with, with the idea of this glorified violence mm. against women. Uh, Canada obviously banned the film as well, but in the nineteen nineties decided to allow its individual provinces to decide whether to mit, permit its release. Since nineteen ninety eight, such provinces such as Manitoba, Nova Scotia, and Quebec have released a film with a rating that reflects its content. Yes, treat people like adults. The censored American version of the film was released in Australia in 1982. And this is funny because Australia, we all know, is one of the harshest motherfuckers mm. when it comes to this. In 1982 with an R18 rating. And in 1987, the film also survived an appeal to ban it. And so it continued to be sold until 1997 when another reclassification caused its ban in Australia. Oh God. What the <laughs> fuck, Australia? <laughs> In 2004, the full uncut version was awarded an R18 certificate, relief, lifting its ban. The Office of Film and Literature Classification justified this decision by reason that castrat castration is not sexual violence, which is under Australian censorship law forbids the release of films that depict scenes of sexual violence as acceptable or justified. So it's really interesting that they focused on the castration mm -hmm. as not sexual violence, because I would actually say... Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, part of it, it comes from to snip. Yeah. It's, that's a, weird, that's a one. weird one. I get, you know, but hey, fine. It's, it's, if you're in Australia, you get to watch it. Good for you. Of course, in our country, the UK, it was on the Director of Public Prosecution's list of prosecutable films until 2001, where a heavily cut version, which extensively edited the rape scenes, was released with an 18 certificate. The cuts were then reduced considerably mm -hmm. for seven minutes, two seconds in the 2001 release, the two minutes, 54 seconds in the 2011 release. So the only scenes of rape that focus on Jennifer's nudity have been banned since the 2011 release. So unsurprisingly, you will not, we did not see the fully uncut version. Mm -hmm. So that would, that would kind of affect our kind of view on it as well. 254. 254, that's, that's a, almost three minutes of cuts. It's that's, quite a bit. Yeah, and it's quite say, significant. Yeah, and if it focuses on, let's say, might, that might have pushed people over the edge of focusing on nudity. Like, how, where were you filming? Like, what was you filming? Was you filming just kind of really up close and things like that? So maybe. maybe. That's what we didn't get. So Maybe. However, I'm a strong advocate for giving a rating it reflects. I'm a grown up. Yeah. That thing. Yeah. New Zealand, the uncut version of the film was classified in 1984 as R20. With the descriptive note contains graphic violence, can content may disturb. Which is a fair point. Other versions with shorter running times are also classified in 84 and 85, but with the same classification. Mm -hmm. And the Irish Film Board has again banned the film from sale. Having been banned for many years in the country, the new Blu-ray and DVD uncensored edition has been prohibited mm -hmm. from purchase by retailers due to the nature of the film. Naughty, naughty. It's, that's very weird, because especially in Ireland where certain things are illegal, or have been fought for... Justification and stuff like that. We're a funny, film. we're a funny bunch of people, us mm. humans, when it comes to uh, visual, mm. audio, or content and stuff like mm. that. What we decide is acceptable for some and so on, and how mm. to, even so, even as times change, and what content is freely available in horror and in non-horror stuff, whether it be a music video that's mm. aimed at teenage girls and boys, or a thriller that's or a, a well-loved show like Game of Thrones and things mm. like that. And it's like, nah, 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 nah. The, we, you know, we still pick and choose and decide, no, that is not acceptable for you. Even though we have a very robust rating mm. system. But there you go. That is I Spit on Your Grave. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. 
Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?